Okay, we are back with another coaches debate, which we are now calling Try to Disagree. Try to Disagree. Yeah, and today we're discussing data or data. We're not discussing whether you call it data or data. It's we're data. discussing it's data. It's data. Data. Whether you should use it, <laughs> how much you should focus on it, should you use it every day, in every way, should you use it on race day? Well, let's discuss. Okay, and we actually did discuss this a few weeks ago in one of our normal shorter coaches corners, but we literally covered this in two or three minutes. And it's quite a big topic. We feel like it deserves its own show where we look into the pros, the cons, the pitfalls and so on. So here we are. Yeah. These days it's easier than ever to use data. Numbers are everywhere. Uh, they're so easily accessible. I mean, you can get a bike computer now that shows you your average power, your normalized power, your actual power, your heart rate, your speed, your distance, your cadence, all at the same time. I mean, I, I was even using muscle oxygen saturation sensor this week. I'm not sure that's a data number you necessarily need, but it's available, <laughs> that's the whole point. There is so much, but numbers really depend on how you use them, how much you value them, how much you believe them, how much you believe in them. Yeah, and there are, I guess, two main sides to this, um, but probably a majority of people sit somewhere in the middle. Yeah. But if we take the polars, we've got people that are so for data, they use it day in, day out, and they race to it religiously, and then you've got others that use data little, if ever, at all. Yeah, racing on feel and internal dialogue rather than numbers. Well, we're going to discuss. Mark is going to be for data. And I, I actually, I, I kind of am, actually. Genuinely, yeah. this isn't me just doing it for the show. I actually, well, anyway, we're going to get I like a good number, <laughs> but I am on the fence a little bit. I also think you could do without them, and maybe you should. Anyway. Interesting. This yeah. could get heated. So, <laughs> my first argument for this then is that knowing what's going on inside your body is so valuable. And if you're using data day in, day out and working to those numbers, you start to understand what you're capable of. When it comes to race day, you can literally race to the numbers that you have been training to and learnt to, to train to or the effort levels and therefore you can pace your race very well and get the most out of yourself or hold yourself back and well avoid destroying your race. But with that simple race day would be easy. You could do a few tests, you could know your numbers for race day and you'd just be a robot who just has to follow his numbers. On race, no one could ever DNF. It would be impossible unless you were a fool and your numbers, but there's more to it on race day than that. It's not as simple as just following your numbers. Uh, numbers also are, a, they work both ways. Yes, they can hold you back and make sure you pace yourself well. But on the flip side, race day is a different animal entirely. Sometimes on race day, you've got that more motivation. There's people on the side, you're well tapered and you can actually blow any numbers that you thought were possible out of the water completely and those numbers may actually be holding you back if you're sticking to those strict numbers that you've set for yourself. Okay, hey, but kind of coming back to one of my previous points, I do think data can help prevent mistakes and probably one of the biggest of them is pacing, going out too hard. But also, there's other things like nutrition. Now, okay, I know there's glucose monitors. I'm not suggesting we all start using oh. glucose monitors, well, albeit very interesting, but you can notify yourself on devices these days to remind you of your nutrition, taking stuff on, which, let's face it, a lot of people do forget to do. So using devices to remind yourself to eat and drink, but this is my <laughs> whole point, okay. that you start becoming reliant on these devices instead of your internal feedback, and the internal feedback is there, it's always there, and yes, it's fine if your numbers work, if they're reliable and they're accurate and you get them spot on for race day, then great, but it doesn't work so well when they're a little bit wrong, a poorly calibrated power meter a heart rate monitor that sparks, or just a dead battery can leave you flailing in the unknown because you've not trained or raced without numbers for so long that you just don't know how hard you can go. You need to learn your own internal feedback. That internal feedback can also help you pace yourself well, and it can be really, really accurate. And as for the eating and drinking, if you're in tune with your internal feedback, you'll know when you're thirsty and hungry. You don't oh, need a device to could, tell you that. Could be too late though. Could be too late and the damage is done. Anyway, we'll get back to racing in a sec because uh, I think we could um, end up uh, going into this for too long. 
What about training? And I think this is, uh, personally, um, from experience, this is where I think data has its biggest impact. Um, so by obviously using data day and day out and you know, coaching athletes as well, if they're uploading all their data, I'm able to monitor their training load, how fatigued they are, and so on and so forth. And again, and maybe this is just myself, but I think a lot of other people fall into this category as well. I'm guilty of pushing too hard to the point that I am probably going into the red in terms of overall fatigue, chronic training load, and if I didn't sometimes have that data there or you know, monitoring as a coach athletes data, I can pull them back, recover, adapt, and push on and get more out of them. And also, if you are using things like this, you can start to track your fitness progression because of the data you're uploaded, uploading. And that can be quite motivating if, if it's going up. Well, yeah, that's really good for a coach because it removes that subjective feedback, absolutely. And I, obviously being able to get that feedback to your coach without them ever having to actually even ask you is great but it's the same counterpoint if you have to rely on numbers to tell you that you're tired you're not listening to your body's cues and it's all well and good when things are going the right direction and it is motivating to see those little lines and training peaks going up and up and up and as you get fitter and fitter but the same counterpoint when it doesn't go so well when you maybe have a little bit of a cold or you miss a few days for whatever life stressor throws at you then you see those numbers fall off a cliff and you remember it took me six weeks to get my numbers that high and now they're so low I'll never be ready for my race and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, right, you right. start looking at it going well I'll never be fit enough now my training peaks has told me that my numbers are through the floor I may as well just not start the race. Okay I, I think you might agree with me here though um, by uploading your data and seeing you know, how the graphs are moving, chronic training load and stuff, and obviously learning from how you feel in those instances, you can start to make these educated decisions based on previous feelings and having seen what certain numbers, when you see yourself getting to a certain number, you're like, oh right, okay, yeah, no, this was a bad, bad time last time, so on and so forth. Yeah, no. I suppose, yeah, you can see things coming that you have done before, but that's basically saying, well, I'm learning from my mistakes now i made the mistake of going too far into a hole and now when i see that on the numbers but you can but i don't think everyone knows when they are getting into that hole without the numbers they sometimes like is this the same as last time they sort of need to have uh, that little I reminder i suppose but perhaps if you were paying more attention to your internal cues you would remember what it felt like when you were getting to that point just before you broke down <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm gonna swiftly try and move this one on again um I actually want to touch a little bit on HRV because this is also coming from a bit of personal experience. I uh, had glandular fever years and years ago before being a triathlete and um, have a, a history of potentially going into that kind of slightly overtrained state and I have to be careful with that. And I found HRV invaluable in terms of understanding when it was okay to train and not okay to train and I wouldn't whilst I would consider myself quite in tune with my body I wouldn't have necessarily have always known had the HRV not alerted that to me at the first instance perhaps even before I started to feel slightly unwell and what I would say with that is it's becoming so readily accessible these days on wearables I think the time investment and energy is so little and easy these days that it's just a no-brainer I, I see your point on HRV and I also have used HRV quite successfully but I did find that after a month or two I was waking up deciding how I felt and then using HRV to confirm what I already knew rather than the other way around. The, the HRV was just a, a number that was basically confirming what I already knew. I was tired this morning, I woke up feeling not so good. And as for the investment of time and energy in these devices, sure, you can just strap it on and it is all readily available there, but there is an investment of time. There are apps to download. I mean, these new wearable trackers actually have to spend a month learning you, never mind you learning their app. They have to learn you and you have to charge the batteries and you have to connect the devices and batteries die and connections are lost. and. There are so many batteries if you've got a power meter and all of these things on your bike, you've got to charge them all. It starts becoming a drain and I get it. Some people love that stuff. That is the best part of their day and not where they're plugging all the things in and making sure everything's connected and downloading the data. 
But well, my house is, people, my house is just a wireless hub. It just I just walk everything in, everything just charges. charges. Yeah, you just all your yeah. all your imagine, lights just come imagine. on. Imagine. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe in the future it'll all just charge wirelessly while we sleep. But right now you still have to remember to charge it, and you're constantly getting notifications that batteries are dying, etc. And for some people, that's a real drain on a day that is already tiring. Uh, and you could do without it completely if you want to. Okay, I hear you on that one. Um, now, I do just generally think with the advances in technology, products available, such as power meters and various other things, you're just really missing a trick by not using it. And if you, I'm not even suggesting you necessarily are looking at the numbers in real time whilst you're doing sessions day in, day out. But being able to analyze that data afterwards is invaluable. Being able to compare session to session, hopefully see progresses, but also it can actually highlight certain instances issues perhaps like with a power meter you might be able to see an imbalance left right leg and then be that whether that's just general training or issues you can actually action that and start to progress and tailor your training around that i can see that point that that makes absolute sense and i think you will find that you could do that with one test once a month with a power meter where you did a spin scan and you could see where your where your where your weakness was. We did a power test and you could see your power curve and you could see where your weaknesses were and what you need to work on for the next month. You don't need that data in your face every single day to make the progress and be a better athlete. That it is possible to do it without constantly looking at data and having this constant stream of data downloading from your training. Okay James, I I don't disagree but I I do believe that your brain can be enhanced with some of these powerful tools and the technology available. And I've got examples or instances where you're trying to bring together a team of people, perhaps based around the world, and actually being able to upload all of this data and then being able to just easily see that and be able to make good decisions, educated decisions based on what they're seeing has made a big difference. And I'm not just talking everyday athletes, also pro athletes doing that. So yep. that, I think it's big. I don't actually disagree, obviously. <laughs> I mean, I use the power meter on my back and I, I do see the benefit of it. However, I think that the media and obviously the brands who are trying to sell these things kind of oversell this. If you want to be good, you need to use numbers and you need to use a power meter, otherwise you will never be good. Basically, buy a power meter and you'll be a better cyclist. That's not how it works. Train properly and you'll be a better cyclist. I think that especially when you get into 8, 9, 10, 12 hour races, internal feedback still trumps external feedback. You need to be consciously aware of what is going on inside your body and constantly using numbers drowns that out and makes it makes you less aware of it and less knowledgeable of that internal feedback. And I think that's dangerous and people need to be aware of that danger. Yeah, and obviously I don't disagree with you either. I'm actually guilty <laughs> myself of quite often heading out the door with nothing on. What, what, what are you doing? Not literally Whoa. nothing on. Uh, I do like to run naked without my watch every so different, often. Different, different debate different entirely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I do think that actually by teaming it together and you can use data to understand and learn how that feels um, and that feedback internally. So I think you can do both. You could race all with data or without. Um, and actually I would suggest you go and try doing both. Yeah, I think you can get performance either way you go. I think the key factor is whichever way you go, don't become too reliant on it. If you never use data, then occasionally do a test where you record everything, your spin scan, your pedal efficiency, your FTP, everything. And then you can compare that in a month or two or three months and see how far you've come. And similarly, if you use data all the time, occasionally just go out naked, not actually naked, but without any numbers and just ride on feel or run on feel. I'm stealing your uh, computers off you now. You've you're so against it. <laughs> right, uh, well, thanks ever so much, guys, for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed another of these coaches' debates. Try to disagree. If so, please do give it a thumbs up and get involved in the comment section down below. If there's anything you'd like us to debate and get a rather heated about, then, um, yeah, let us know. Thanks for watching.